We are talking about vaccines today. What are the vaccines in the pipeline? Are they going to be fast-tracked like we saw with the COVID-19 vaccines? And how are we going to turn these life-saving vaccines into vaccinations? Hello and welcome to Science in 5. I'm Vismita Gupta-Smith. Our expert today is Dr. Catherine O'Brien. Welcome, Kate. Let's start with the vaccines that are in the pipeline. That's such a great question, Vismita. We've seen the rapid development of COVID-19 vaccines over the past two years, and uh, there is a whole pipeline of products that are coming through that are not against other germs other than COVID-19. They really fall into two categories. The first is vaccines for um, germs that we don't have vaccines for, and the primary ones that we're pursuing in that group are vaccines against RSV. That's a virus that is one of the most common causes of serious lung disease in young children and infants. It comes through in waves um, on an annual basis in pretty much every country around the world. Another of the new vaccines that we don't have a product yet for is group B strep. That's a germ, a, a bacteria that causes um, very serious infections in young infants um, and leads to death in young infants. And so this is um, obviously uh, an important target to prevent meningitis in infants and, and protect the lives of newborns. Um, we also have vaccines that are still being pursued against viruses for which we don't have a vaccine, HIV in particular. Then there's the other category of vaccines, ones that we already have, but we're pursuing improved vaccines. And in that category, um, we're looking very seriously at um, tuberculosis vaccines, second generation tuberculosis vaccines. Um, in that category are also improved influenza vaccines. And of course, second generation COVID vaccines are also in development. Kate, with COVID-19 vaccines, we saw a fast-track process. Can we expect the same with these upcoming vaccines? Well, COVID-19 was very special, and it was you've probably all heard this term, unprecedented. We keep calling the development of COVID-19 vaccines unprecedented. And the reason that um, we shouldn't necessarily expect that the pace of uh, vaccine development will go as quickly as it did are for several reasons. First of all, um, there was the whole world was turned on to the pursuit of um, uh, developing COVID-19 vaccines. There was uh, a, a complete coordination and collaboration and practically every laboratory and scientist um, that worked on vaccine development, both in companies that manufacture vaccines and in academics and other research institutes were pursuing COVID vaccines. So that's not the way it, it normally works for vaccine development. The second reason is that um, the amount of funding that goes into vaccine development was enormous and unprecedented for COVID vaccines. And the third reason that these were so fast and so successful um, was that there was um, an infrastructure for clinical trials around the world um, that was used and turned over um, to COVID-19 uh, vaccine development. So it was really that there was this one target that everybody was pursuing. So for these other vaccines, um, we wouldn't expect that they would go nearly as quickly. However, um, I think because of all the different ways that clinical development of vaccines happened during COVID-19, people are really learning the lessons from that and looking at the steps that can be um, shortened or run in parallel um, so that we can actually shorten the amount of time and the amount of effort and investment it takes to bring some of these life-saving vaccines um, actually to availability. Kate, we know that governments around the world are working hard to provide access to these vaccines. Speak to us about how these upcoming vaccines will be turned into vaccination. You know, we, it's commonly said that vaccines don't save lives, vaccinations save lives. And so it's a vaccine is really of no benefit if it sits on the shelf and doesn't actually get um, deployed. Now, there are lots of reasons why um, vaccinations don't happen, even though vaccines are available. Um, some of the reasons why is um, simply the convenience of the services. They're not at the time or the place or the distance where it's easy for um, really busy people, especially busy mothers, um, to take their kids or their adolescent um, uh, teenagers to get vaccination. It's also a problem for older adults. Now, another reason why vaccines don't turn into vaccinations, um, we've heard a lot about vaccine hesitancy 
or people who are opposed to vaccination. And I want to really debunk a myth that somehow this is a, a big group of people. In fact, people who are opposed to vaccination is a very small fraction of people who don't get vaccinated. And usually um, they're operating under some misinformation that's been shared with them. But there is another group of people who um, are hesitant about vaccines. They may have questions about um, how safe do we know that vaccines are and what is the way that vaccines work. Again, a lot of misinformation among people about um, exactly what vaccines um, do when you receive a vaccine. And I want to just reinforce that vaccines um, stimulate your own immune system, your body's natural immune system, to develop protections against the germ that is actually being vaccinated against. So that when you may be exposed to that germ in the future, in a real life setting, your body already has defenses to protect against it. Thank you, Kate. If you have any questions about vaccines, please visit our website. Remember, vaccines save lives. Until next time then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stick with science.